Hey, it's MH4 from after the episode is edited, and I just wanted to say that uh, the beginning of the episode has some warbly audio that was an error that happened when recording, so uh, it, it fixes itself eventually, but just wanted to let you know that, and without further ado, welcome to the MH Forecast! Howdy, folks, and Disaster to the MH4 and welcome to episode two of the MH4 forecast. I'm here with today's special guest. Could you please introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I'm uh, L Marsh or Marshy for short. Uh, I'm an animator, uh, artist, kind of like a jerk. I don't know how you, <laughs> it. you know, kind of just a guy. Nothing, nothing really big special about that, you know. What do you, uh, what do you like to animate? Uh, usually just, like, my own stuff. Like, I'm, I'm a, I'm a up-and-comer, you know? So, like, I haven't really gotten that big boost yet. I've been trying to break into, like, because I used to do a bunch of fan art for people, but that was before, like, when I was in MS Paint, you know? Right. So, I've been trying to get back into actually doing stuff, because, I mean, as most artists know today, like, you can't really break through with, like, little stuff. You need to be able to, like, expand by doing, like, parodies, stuff like that, you know? So, right, right. I've been trying well, to get um... into that field. What kind of stuff do you think you want to parody? Like, what's your... Oh, you know, like, I mean, you gotta be passionate. That, you know, all the, all the right. you know, people you look up to. Like, I, I frankly, I look up to pretty much anyone who came from Newgrounds, seeing all those guys, like Sleepy Cast, uh, Psychic mm-hmm. Pebbles, Oni, Stamper, Johnny Utah, all those guys. And, you know, whenever they talked about how much they did parodies, they normally said that they hated them. But, <laughs> you know, and also Meat Canyon, that guy. He also yeah, he can. talks about that a lot, you know, and he always like the one rule you got to remember about parodies is you don't do it if you hate the thing. Like if you do, you got to actually have some love for the series to do the parody, you know? Right. Because at that point, you're just making fun of it. Yeah, you're just making fun. So you have to have some kind of knowledge of this, this series, you know? So, you know, I was thinking uh, I'm a big One Piece fan. I'll probably do one in One Piece. I had some scripts lined up. Nice. Think about TF2 one, two. I like TF2. That's a but classic. It, yeah, despite, you know, TF2 not really liking me a lot now. But, you know, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't like a lot of everybody, you know, so there's that. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't even meet you before this, so what's what's your thing? <laughs> this is our first time ever talking, by the way. <laughs> yeah, like so, you messaged, you know. I, I, put out a, I put out a collab post on Newgrounds, and uh, you were the second person to uh, respond. Oh. And the first person that I've recorded with. Uh, outside of the first episode, which was with uh, two of the other members in this server. Oh, cool. Uh, but so my thing is, uh, I like making just whatever I can, and that took the form of YouTube videos. I'm not really an artist. I've I've drawn my whole life, you know, doodled and stuff. Oh, yeah, I, th- I saw yours, though. Yours were pretty f- good, I'm going to be honest, for that. Like, even someone who doesn't say they're an artist, you know? No, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I do like them. I it's not really like super high quality or professional. Oh no, but you got a style, is what I'm saying. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you definitely got a style, you know. I d- I don't have like what someone would call like fundamentals. <laughs> I at some point I want to sit myself down and like learn anatomy and stuff like that because yeah. I don't really know that kind of stuff. But I'm insanely impressed by anyone who can animate at all because uh. I've been watching, uh, you know, uh, Phantom Arcade. Yeah, yeah. I've been watching some of his animation streams, and it takes forever. Oh, trust me. How I started initially was I started with art, you know, and then I was like, oh yeah, I'll just do animation because you know it was like you know I was in high school, like early high school, and I originally wanted to be a chef, and um, then uh, I realized, oh wait, I've literally never cooked in my life. Like I don't know how to cook. <laughs> Despite despite wanting to be a chef for like five years, I have no idea how to cook. So I was like, I guess I'd give, give on that. And then I started doodling one day. My brother walks up and he's like, you could be an artist. You're really good. And I was like, okay. And then, you know, all my early work is pretty crap, you know, like horrible. Right. But now I've kind of graduated to like at least being stable. And yeah, I could say animation is hell. It's a hell <laughs> profession. Um, <laughs> it is, really. Uh, there are some days where I'm like, like, I'm already two years into college. Oh man, I wish like there were some days where I was like, man, I, maybe I made the wrong choice here. Maybe like a because a banker, you know, they make a lot of money and it's a simple job, right? 
And, like, I don't gotta be, like, sitting at my desk getting arthritis all day, coming up with ideas and drawing them. And also, you know, when this was just, like, here, here's what every artist says. When this was, like, fun, I liked it, you know? Like, I still like doing it. I still love being an animator. But right. when this was fun, like, I had actual joy. It's like, man, I'm in high school and I'm just doodling some stupid stuff and posting it on the internet. And it's getting a couple likes. Now it's like, this has to be my job. I right, it's put, not, like, effort. there's a lot more on the line. Exactly. It's like, oh, shoot, I had to put, like, effort into it. Oh, no. So, like, you know. And, you know, I've been able to find a good place. I feel like Newgrounds, especially. Hey, let's promote the hell out of them. I feel like they're yeah. definitely a good place for this, man. Newgrounds is definitely the best place for up-and-coming artists. Especially because of the community tab. Like, I barely knew about the community tab. And then I was like, like, there's a ton of people here looking for stuff. And, like, mm -hmm. I can fill that gap, you know? I actually, just a few days ago... And I don't say this to like say anything about myself or whatever. Yeah. It's more saying about like Newgrounds. I became a supporter the other day. Ooh. And I feel really good about that because uh, I, I see all the work that like Tom and the staff do for the community. And it genuinely feels more like a community than it does a platform. Yeah. Like 100%. Like Newgrounds is a family. Mm -hmm. I gotta say though, I was pretty, I was pretty ignorant when I first started out. I think it was a... Uh, up until actually a couple weeks ago, because I did a community post a few weeks ago, uh, I was still thinking this. I was like, you know, in my head, in the back of my mind, there was always this fallback plan. I was like, man, Newgrounds is so great. I was like, I want to work for them one day. But I uh. never really, like, <laughs> you know, I never looked into, like, how that works. So I was like, maybe since they're a company, in the back of my head, again, like, this was me completely no knowledge about all this stuff. Right. I was hosting on the part, in fact, and I was telling my family members and all my friends, like, yeah, one day I'm probably going to work for Newgrounds, probably going to get, like, an internship with them. And then I was like, but then, like, recently it came up, like, wait, do they do internships? And then I looked it up, and I looked into it with the community tab, and, you know, a guy, I forgot his name, but uh, he was very helpful, very supportive. He basically said, like, they don't. They don't have the money to do it. And mm -hmm. uh, But you should just pursue art on Newgrounds, because it's a good place to pursue art. And I'm like, yeah, I'm already doing that. Thanks, though. Like, that, that's cool, man. Thank you. <laughs> But, you know, I'm already doing that. But, yeah, I mean, I had a Newgrounds account, like, from 2008. The only issue is that um, I had to delete that one when I actually oh. got serious about art posting. Because that one was full of, full of like, uh, you know, like, posts and, like, uh, right. you know, and, like, just a ton of exposing things. <laughs> like, <laughs> multiple pictures of my faces. Uh Right. A lot of, like, friends. Uh, there was, like, an ex-girlfriend that I drew. Just, like, just stuff that right. should not be on a Newgrounds page that, like... And I knew I could delete all of it, but then it's, like, <laughs> someone could have saved it. Also, it's, like, also, <laughs> like, I didn't know Newgrounds tracked this kind of stuff, you know? There were a couple things that I noticed right. Newgrounds tracked. And I was like, wait, why did I give five stars to this game? I don't want people attaching me to this game. Uh-oh. And then I just decided, you know what? I have like one or two fans. I'm going to wipe the account and just start fresh. And I did that like a year ago. And I don't really regret it, but I did lose two followers. So there you go. I lost two <laughs> followers from that. Shout outs to those two followers. So shout out to those two followers. I'm sorry that I deleted the account with two pieces of art on it. <laughs> I saw That's your uh, that your account uh, creation date was uh, September 5th. That's actually my birthday. <laughs> oh, my God. Really? <laughs> I thought that was really funny. That's lucky, dude. That's lucky. Uh, yeah, that's when I created the new account. That's when I deleted the old one. That that was when I was kind of going through multiple overhauls. Like I said, I have a YouTube channel. I recommend... I'm not even going to shout it out. I recommend no one following it, because I would feel embarrassed. It's mainly full of my friends following me and, like, a family member or two. But even with those family members, I feel embarrassed, you know? Right, that's I always how it is when, like you're making stuff because like in the moment you're so proud of making it you're like oh I'm, this is gonna be great i'm gonna show it to everybody they're gonna love it but then when you put it out there you're like oh no dude a hundred percent like a hundred percent there's a couple of things there that i am proud of there's one or two videos like i did you know i did like a school project here and it's like man this <laughs> one was really funny i'm gonna post it to youtube you know and yeah those were one or two but then there's also a ton of failed stuff where it's like man me and my friend doing like one let's play and then right. just like a sea of just posting videos man i'm not proud of those you know <laughs> the, the the biggest success on my channel was not like the collaboration with another artist or like you know me doing actually something that i like with animation no it was like oh i like did a fake parody with a goku toy and a gorilla toy and uh, that stings and that always happens with art too that is the same thing you know you feel really right. sad 
So it's like, I worked so hard on this post. Like, this cartoon, it's like 40 seconds long. It's the highest it's ever been. You know, not a lot of animation, but still, it's like really right. good. High effort. Put it on the platform. It got like two stars. It got like zero reviews. No one commented. It got like 20 views. And then, you know, I make like a post about Pac-Man doing drugs. And it gets like a million upvotes. And everyone loves it. And oh, yeah, that, that happened on Twitter. That happens it's on always Twitter. the characters doing drugs exactly. and it's but, always on Twitter. It's like, yeah, exactly. uh, I, I don't use Twitter anymore, but I've seen plenty of times when people will say like, how is this my most liked post? And it's like, they have these beautifully rendered drawings on their accounts, but like they have this drawing of like, uh, Mario on mushrooms or something. No, exactly. That that's the meme. That's the meme of Twitter artists. It's like, you know, I always see that one. It's like, I put so much time and effort. This is my master. This is my Picasso. Right. And then, like, it gets, like, maybe 20 likes. And it's like, oh, I drew, like, Mario today, and he's doing shrooms, and, like, you know, he's drinking alcohol, and he's in GTA World. And it gets, like, 5 million upvotes, and a million likes, and shares everywhere, and YouTubers are talking about it. And right. someone stole it and put it on, like, an arcade machine. <laughs> and it's like, whoa! Why? <laughs> I can't even put that one in a portfolio. <laughs> right. I know that happened to like, what was it? I know it happened to Phantom Arcade. That happened to Friday Night Funkin'. It like in the original contest, because I, I think it was made for like a contest. Uh, yeah, the it, Ludum Dare. Yeah, exactly. It got like 10th place. Like it failed. But then right. like they kept working on it. Got so popular that now you're seeing apps rip it off. People are modding the hell out of it. Have you seen I'll, that uh, arcade machine? <laughs> Yeah, no, that's what I meant. He posted about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone took the artwork and put it on an arcade machine. And I'm like, that's what you <laughs> want to get remembered for. Someone stole your work. I know that's happened to a couple artists. Like, someone I did know um, in the community, I talked to them once or twice. They had, uh, I don't want to say the name, but because right. I kind of had a falling out with them. But uh, gotcha. they, ha yeah. uh, they, had a, they had a similar thing because they went to Japan and they found some of their art. They made Sonic fan art. And they found that in a claw machine. A claw machine? Yeah. Oh, like the art on the claw machine. I was thinking. Yeah, like the art. <laughs> there was like, oh, yeah, no, no. But they had the, yeah, they had a back art. And it was a bunch of like plush dolls, like Sonic ones, like Amy and And right. on the back was just their Sonic art. And they were like, hey, look at this. They posted it on Discord. And I was like, oh, wow. You've achieved yourself. There you go. Like some, some Chinese guy did that, you know? I uh, have an arcade in my local area. And there are like these kind of like bootleg, like multi cade machines that have like 50 different oh, games yeah. on them. And they've got so much like stolen art on them. Like there's like a like a Smash Bros style render of Dig Dug on it. And it's like, where did they get that? <laughs> it's like, oh, they they went on DeviantArt for like one second, typed in like video game character. Right. Like Dig, Dig Dug, Dug. PNG. There you go. OK, and just kind of like took a screenshot of that. I tried DeviantArt too. Uh, that didn't work out. <laughs> Yeah, I can definitely look. I can definitely, because I am very open with my schedule. I have absolutely nothing going on in my life. I pride myself in that. And also, it's something that I'm very sad about. <laughs> that, that, that you know, I'll get home from work, and I'm like, okay. And then the issue with my art is I love drawing, and I love animating, and I love creating ideas. Right. The issue is that, like, when I get home at 1, like 1 to 5, I'll be like, yeah, I'm not feeling it right now. And then right at five o'clock when I'm like, I should be eating maybe right. around like 10 going to bed. I'm like, oh, shoot, I have a good idea. And I'll start drawing and animating. Right. As soon and as I'll, like I'll that happens to me when I'm making videos, too. Like as soon as I need to be doing something else, I'll get a good idea or like feel motivated to work on something like I have this big, long project that I'm working on. Uh, it'll probably be out by the time this podcast goes up. So essentially what it is, is I'm making a uh, I presented to one of my college classes last semester a uh memorized like off the cuff timeline of the first few five nights at freddy's games <laughs> and oh. i got the chance to record it and so i'm making that into a video and the footage is like an hour long and i'm f not feeling motivated to edit it so i know exactly what you mean oh yeah like i mean the the, the main issue is that you know then i'll we'll stay up till like 1 a.m right and it's like I should have just done this, like, earlier in the day. Why didn't I? And then it's like, oh, well, I know why. <laughs> right, and it's not like we were doing anything else earlier. Because <laughs> I, I didn't feel anything, you know? I didn't feel at all anything about this, you know? 
Yeah. How do you, uh, how do you usually like battle that lack of motivation? What do you do to keep yourself motivated? I don't. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> the, the, that, that's how this works. I don't. That's the I honest just, truth. I, I just kind of like sit there and I sit there with my ass in my hand and uh, my mouse on my, on my other hand on my mouse. And I'm like, this YouTube video is funny. And I'm like, I, I, that animation is simple. I could do that animation. And then I look into the mirror right next to my desk. And I go, huh. You know, I, I could be doing that animation. <laughs> and then that thought lingers for like three hours. And then it comes to five o'clock. And, you know, my parents are like, dinner time. And I'm like, okay. And I'll just be on my, I'll be on my tablet. And I'll be like, okay, got to get this. <laughs> right. I, I got, only up until recently did I find out how to actually, I knew animation and I took classes and I know how to animate up until this point. I did not know how to like actually structure it and actually start doing stuff with that power, you know, mm. like I knew how to do it on paper. Just executing it was like the hard part, you know? Right. Yeah. And also, it's just a combination of that and, like, crippling perfectionism. Mm. Like, I hate it. And it usually crushes most artists, and it's probably going to crush me. It crushes me a lot. It's just, it's just the thought of, like, man, I just spent, like, three hours on this thing. It looks pretty good. Oh, man, that looks horrible to me. <laughs> Time to delete it and never post it and never do anything with it. And then I'll show it to my friend. He's like, that looks pretty good. And I'm like, no, no, it's horrible. It's horrible. Got to get rid of it. Got to start over tomorrow because I spent three hours on it today. It's good that you have those friends you can show it to, though, that you can like, they can in encourage you about it. And like, yeah. you can just show the stuff to. I mean, I'm just happy that I have some friends who are artists, mm. uh, except by this point, I think a few of them are starting to get uh, pretty, pretty, uh, you know, tired of my because, <laughs> uh, because, you know, it's not fun for them to get home at like 6 a.m. on a shift that went from like nine to six. My one friend, uh, I don't know if he probably doesn't have hate me for a second. He, he works as a security guard. So he goes in at like 8 p.m. or like 7 p.m. when the mall closes, oh, gets home man. at like, gets home at like 8 a.m. <laughs> Good he grief. probably doesn't like me, like, hitting him up at 2 a.m. while he's at work, being like, yo, can you talk? Like, I really <laughs> want to get this animation done, but, like, I'm kind of lost on this one part. And then, you know, next day, when he's like, no, I can't, I'm at work, probably next day feeling like, I'm like, damn it. Like, I feel bad now, because... Right, that's not, not exactly something somebody wants to be doing at 2 a.m. Exactly, I feel like a huge... <laughs> and, like, I've helped him with stuff. Like, I'm not trying to paint myself... I've helped him with stuff, so it's somewhat fair. But also, I am a huge, huge, like, asshole. Right, we always, we're always the most critical to ourselves, you know? Exactly, exactly, 100%. So it's like, yeah, he helped me that, like, I helped him that one time. But then also, the multitude of times that he's helped me. And by this point, a fraction of my style, I owe to him, you know? Mm. And that's, and it's one friend, which really puts this on, like, a, he's definitely getting tired. Because I have other friends... But, like, they're either just artists, or they're on the same level as me, where they don't know what they're doing, but they're trying to figure it out. I try and figure it out, but, again, perfectionism be Like, I'm not trying to use it as a crutch, but I hate it. Right. Because it just, it just throws me off, too. It, like, completely destroys motivation. You'll be doing it, and it just completely wipes it out. You'll be like, yeah, this cartoon is coming along pretty well. Got, like, five, ten seconds done. Almost done with it. And then like the pen tool doesn't work or my tablet has this weird thing where occasionally it'll just freeze. Uh, and then when it unfreezes, I'll try and draw on it and it will not let me draw. So I'll have to reset the whole thing. The random technology glitches are always the most demotivating for me. Exactly. Like a while back, uh, and the, the issue was just that I hadn't updated my editing software, but earlier in the year I would render anything. And every now and then, a certain clip would just be out of place. And no matter how many times I fixed it, it would always come out of place. Oh my. So I just gave up and like, just left the error in, but all I had to do was update it, but it was super demotivating. It was super like it knocked the wind out of my sails so much. I hate that so much dude. Like that does happen. And I literally like, I hate it, dude. It, you can never I explain it, it either. It just, exactly. it just happens. Cause recently I've been trying to be like, okay, 
I'm able to now do a successful like mini short cartoon, but I want to do like a couple of big ones, you know. And it's like, but to do that, I can't make them silent because I want to have jokes in them. Right. So it's like I've been trying to master audio works. I suck with audio, but it's like I'm trying to work on it, you know. But you know, then other times it'll be like, okay, finished cartoon, rendered it, took like an hour because my PC is old as like not my PC, but my laptop that I use for drawing is old as. Time to just get it out there, and I upload it onto like Newgrounds, and I play it first. And there's one part where it goes, and then it's like, oh, so something messed up on the audio. Perfect. That's how that works. That's just how it works. That's just how it works. You gotta roll with the punches, you know. You know, if uh, if a banker is doing his job, or an accountant is doing their job, and their computer crashes, they just go to their like files and they just start writing on a piece of paper. Or, right. like, they get someone to come in and they just fix the computer up. And it's like, okay, brand new. Time to start again. Right. We don't have that or luxury. Going, we don't have that luxury. It's like, when we, when it, and especially if you didn't, like, save it. Oh, that's always the worst, too. When that happens, it's just like, oh. So now, not only did I lose three hours of work, but also, like, there's a problem. It's nice. That's kind of like... Uh, it's a little bit in that way scary how much we rely on technology because like it can just 100%. it just does whatever it wants sometimes it seems like when uh, COVID first started I went through like a major depression mm. you know like most everyone like it was like it was similar stuff it was like you know you remember that one time when you were seven and like you kicked your friend to the ground and like you punched him because you were a little kid and then you blamed it on someone else and then you're like oh Oh, and since all this, like, horrible stuff's going around on you, you're like, oh, I'm such a horrible person. Right. I think I almost starved myself. Oh, man. I didn't eat for, like, I didn't eat for, like, a week or drink anything. Good grief, dude. By the end of the week, I had to, like, crush up food and, like, put into a paste and eat it. Because I was, I was done. And then, you know, my, but, it, you know, family was there, so it was okay. And then by the end of the week, uh, I fully moved into my basement where my brother was living by that point. And, uh, you know, he helped me make it through and then, you know, everything's good now. But yeah, that was, that was like a really rough thing. That's great to hear that you're good now. Oh no, I'm good now. Like that was a rough thing though. Like, I don't know if you had it bad. Like, did you go through something like that? Like my perspective on it is a little bit different. It was, I was a senior in high school when the, it first like super hit early 2020. Me too. Yeah. My, uh, I didn't have to go to school for like the last part of that, uh, semester so it was mostly just like i can't go anywhere but like i can talk with my friends and play games with my friends and stuff so i and i had my family with me so it wasn't it wasn't super bad for me but i'm i'm so sorry to hear that you had to go through that oh no we are actually on the opposite of that one too i was <laughs> about missing school <laughs> I was glad because I have in high school, I had this uh, notoriously like infamous science teacher who uh, bless her. She's uh, she's amazing. She's a great teacher. And I'm glad that I had her. But her tests yeah. are so hard. And because of COVID, I didn't have to take her final exam. Oh, oh well, then there you go. So <laughs> that's like, you know, I'm not trying to say like COVID was a good thing because of that. Obviously, it's not. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. But that's just it indirectly benefited my my grades i mean i had a similar thing like actually i had like a little bit of the opposite i went through another arc when it happened because there was a teacher that i had that notoriously was like this big hard ass and everyone hated him and his <laughs> tests were horrible and he's like a horrible person man this guy sucks and like everyone wanted him dead in the school hey but then like i had him for by that point you know you know around like march we left so right or like march or like late february so i had him by that point for seven months and yeah the first month was like man i get what everyone's saying but then he went through an arc specifically for my class and he started loving us and he started granted he started showing bias to us <laughs> oh, no. like that's what it was it was biased so he treated everyone else like <laughs> but for us it was like man you guys are cool so you know what no test today and you're we like oh, really and he's like yeah I don't, I'd argue that's worse than just being mean to everyone. Yeah, like for instance, he also for our class only put back a system. So, so, so he had people do midterms, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, but if you had like you had to do something along the lines of uh, go to public events 
and like write about them. I'm not going to reveal what the class was. It was some form of, like I because I can't really remember. It was something about history, right? But uh, he had it was a it was a thing where like if you go to like for instance a city council meeting and sit down and take notes, you can get exempt from this like midterm. Huh. And <laughs> barely anyone in the class did it <laughs> except for me. <laughs> I did it. I, I sat down at like three meetings. You were you were you were the smart one. You didn't have to take the test. No, but here's the thing. So Oh no. Again, he let the entire class be exempt from it. <laughs> Just because oh. he really, really liked a lot of the kids in the class. So it didn't matter in the end. No, but the other classes had to take the midterm aside from the one or two other kids that did the same thing I did. So yeah, it wasn't like an arc. It was more like a he went from being like the main villain to like a vigilante. <laughs> Instead of like the shonen protagonist, he became right, he's, like he's not the Joker, he's like Deadpool. Yeah, he's like Deadpool by this point. He's like, yeah, like I'm he's an still anti-hero. Kind of, like I I'm kind of an asshole to everyone else, but you guys are cool. <laughs> and then high school was just stupid after that. Like, you know, like, people always say high school's, like, the best thing ever. Or at least, like, they remember the most from it. I don't remember anything. Yeah, I, like, I didn't even bother going to, like, my, uh, like, prom or any dances or anything. Oh, exactly. It's, it's just not worth it. Well, I mean, look, there's, there are people who like doing it. Oh, for sure. Like, and yeah, to all those people, like, if they liked doing it, and if they liked, like, going and they remember it to this day, that's fine. But for the type of person I am, I saw no point in doing it. Like, oh, yeah, know, in yeah, the back yeah. of my head, in the back of my head, it was like, oh, if I go, though, you know, maybe I'll meet somebody. And it's like, no, because everyone that's going there, I know. Right, exactly. It's like, no, I don't got to go there. I don't got to go. And then I was like, I don't want to waste money doing it. I don't have to go. The biggest thing I regret doing, actually, was um, my middle school did a ton of trips that I think since then have been canceled, not due to COVID, but due to... Um, me, I think, carrying bad luck when it comes to schools. <laughs> Just because of the simple fact of my uh, elementary school, uh, in fifth grade, the, everyone goes on a trip to this one big camp, and the second we left that camp, they canceled it for everyone in the future. Oh, man. I'm thinking just because me and my generation, like the people I grew up with, were so horrible. <laughs> we, broke, we broke every rule in that camp. Oh. You know, some other things happened, some very notable things. Uh, for instance, we would go fishing. We went there for three days. We'd go fishing. Uh, one kid took a fish and, like, put it down, like, the pants of another kid. <laughs> um, we went... Actually, we went at a really bad time, too, because it was right on, like, the... Do you know what a cicada is? Yeah. Yeah, like, they hatch every, like, you know, six years. They yeah, come they, out, and then for that summer, down. it's just, like, yeah. Well, we were in the woods, and it was a six-year anniversary, so there were cicadas everywhere. Like, you couldn't wake up in the morning when they're like, Tsk, you know that? Yeah. And they were everywhere. They were hitting people. But I thought they were cool. I didn't like bugs too much as a kid, but I was like, wow, you know? Um, <laughs> but possibly one of the stupidest things, which I don't know why they did, but it was like a regulated camp, you know? Like, there were cameras everywhere, you know? They had some technology. But they still let a group of 10-year-olds go out into the woods alone. <laughs> so what they did was, like, one of the events that we had to do was on the second day, everyone had to participate before they could go to sleep for a grade, they had to do the scavenger hunt. And I didn't have too many friends, so basically I was it was just like, these four guys are best friends, and you, you're just kind of there, so just get in there. And so they ditched me, <laughs> and then I was stuck in the woods alone, and the only, and it was getting dark, and I was like, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. And again, lucky, thank God, they had cameras, because I guess they knew this was going to happen, because the cameras oh, had like, okay, you know, okay. they have like night vision. And then I'm sitting in the woods, sitting on a rock. It's getting dark. I hear nothing but cicadas. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to die. And then I hear from a big megaphone, go left, go left. And I'm like, what, what, what? And I get up and I'm like, and then I noticed there was a speaker on the camera. All the cameras had speakers so that they can guide kids back to the camp when it's that's, night. That's really smart. Yeah. So they're like, oh, good. We don't want to be dead kids. But also <laughs> it makes you wonder like, huh, wait. What made them think to do this? And then I think, oh, wow, they probably had a dead kid. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that was my saving grace that was my technology, because, you know, no plugins. My right. iPod died, like, the first day. Uh, was I had from Hot Topic that my cousin bought me that came with a Funko Pop. I had a Funko <laughs> Pop of uh, 
a Joker flashlight where you'd shine it and it put a little display of a Funko Pop Joker. But then I also had one of Green Lantern and I would just make them fight. <laughs> and that, that that was my day at the camp. What grade was that in? That was uh, that was uh, fifth grade. <laughs> The dumbest thing I did as a kid was when I was in first grade, all my all my stupid stories are in first grade. When I was in first grade, I uh, thought it would be a grand old idea to. Uh, so let me let me set the stage. It's after lunch. I'm in the bathroom. There are a group of other students who are in line waiting to go into their class. And so I think it's a bright idea in my first grader mind to uh, moon <laughs> this group of students. Oh, and then run back into the bathroom stall and hide. And so I did it and they're like, ah! cause you know, they're first graders they're not first graders. I think they yeah. were, they were older than me. I remember I, I did that. And then I like hid out in the stall and like refused to go to class. Oh, I got in so much trouble for that. Um, if I were to say I, this is not the most stupid, but it's the most cringe thing. And also probably the most stupid. It's combining. Um, oh. This was also when I was in elementary. It was in when I, uh, specifically fifth grade. A lot of the stupid <laughs> happened in fifth grade. I really liked this girl. Oh, no. But multiple times that I asked her, hey, do you want to, like, you know, because we were like we're little children. But right. I was like, do you want to be my girlfriend? And multiple times she's like, no, I, I don't like you that way. And it's like, okay. And I wasn't even really friends with her. I was more acquaintances. Like, But as a child, you think everyone's your friend. So right. I'm like, you want to be my girlfriend? She's like, no. Because before this, also, I had an imaginary girlfriend. Oh, no. I had a girl. I had a girl who I fake... Oh, my <laughs> This is in third grade. I had a girl who I fake married. <laughs> yeah. So, she was nice, though. She was like a nice... She was a nice British girl. And her... <laughs> she lived down the street. She would go with her grandmother, much like mine. Her and my... Her and both our grandmothers lived, like, a street wise from each other. We saw each other a lot at, like, religion class. So... And we hung out with each other a lot at school. And to the point where people started saying, like, Oh, you guys are dating. And we were just like, Yeah, sure. So we saw each other as boyfriend and girlfriend. Until around, like, sixth grade, when we're actual teenagers. But, like, early teenagers. Right. And... She was like, yeah, she, she told me one day, she was like, hey, Marshy, and I didn't say my real name, she's like, hey, Marshy, yeah, I think we have to break up, and I'm like, oh, why? She's like, I'm moving to Florida, and I'm like, and so, like, I get together so much money of my own money, and I'm like, mom, we have to buy her a present, this is my, this is my wife, this is my woman, so, <laughs> next time I see her at religion, I give her this giant basket, and I'm like, farewell, my love, and this is the only and first time that we held hands. So I hold her hand and I hug her. And this was the first time we do this, by the way. And I'm like, oh, goodbye. And like, I leave and I'm crying in the car. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm never going to see her again. Um, cut to like three weeks later, I'm at religion. And I'm talking to a person who was close friends with her. And she's like, what the hell are you talking about moving to Florida? And if she vacationed there for a week, she's back. And I'm like, what? I'm like, no, 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 no. And basically <laughs> no what happened was she couldn't. She couldn't, because she was also a child, she didn't know how to break up with me with this fake marriage. So her excuse was, I'm moving to Florida. Really, they went there for a vacation, and she actually did move, though, but she moved just down the street. And so she started going to a different school and a different religion class. So that was it, and her friend revealed it, and she was like, do you want her number? And by that point, I guess my child brain was smart enough to be like, nah, nah, I don't think she wants to, I don't think she wants anything. But anyway... That's wild. First, That's back wild. That's wild. The second girl I tried to marry. <laughs> this was my rebound. This was my two years later. No, this was my current because that was like a month before this. That was my next rebound. I was like, okay, this girl. I literally have no attraction to her because I'm a child. I don't even really like her too much, but she looks very similar and acts similar to that old girl I used to date. So I'm gonna try and marry her. So I talked to oh. everyone. I. Tried to ask her out multiple times. She said no. So this was my one coupe de grasse. I was like, I'm going to do it like they do in the movies. So I got together literally every single guy in our grade. And every guy was like, we got to help him on this. He's oh, our bro. No. <laughs> None of us are friends with him even. But we got to help him on this. And they got together every single girl. And they were like, come on, get her. And they were like, yeah, we'll keep this hush hush. And then we'll meet together. We were all going to meet at the old apple tree. Because it was a big, huge, like, cherry blossom apple tree right, in our right, playground. Right. That's where I married my first. So I was going to marry my second there. And I get there, 
And the guys actually did give me a nice jacket that looked like a vest. And they were like, yeah, man, you got this. And they gave me a bundle of flowers. And then some guy gave me, like, a fake ring. And this sounds like a f***ing movie, but I was true. Right. And I was like, yes, yes, I'm going to get married again. The second they brought her there, she notices all these people. She notices all of her friends. Like, literally, like, probably the lunch monitors were like, what the f*** is going on? Because they saw every child group up there. And then this I was like, I got, I got down on one knee and I was like, Will you marry me? And she was like, I, I told you multiple times that, like, I, I thought you was a friend. And then, by that point, half the girls started walking away. And then she walked away. And then I just turned around and I was like, thanks anyway, guys. And they were like, we wasted an entire recess doing this. And for an entire the rest of that year, no one talked to me and no one played with me. Because oh, they were no. like, we just wait, waste an entire, none of them even ate. Most of them didn't eat their lunches. That was the no. thing. They're like, we wasted an entire lunch and a lunch break on nothing. And I was like, but I thought maybe we could get, we could get me a girlfriend. <laughs> um, yeah, and then that, that was it with that. And uh, that was probably the worst thing. Besides that, um, the second, like, I was never a bully either, though. I wasn't a bully. Uh, I think I did bully one girl. <laughs> Oh no! Uh, but later on, we became friends, and now we're not friends, certainly, but we're more acquaintances. Whenever I see her, I say hi. Right. But I think I, I used to call her Donkey Kong, oh. <laughs> and I would make like eight noises because <laughs> kids are mean. Know, yeah, because kids are mean, and like she was granted. I think I remember it. She was mean first. Oh, gotcha. But not like more mean playingly, like you know, and um. <laughs> It got bad, so, like, it was more me being a child and taking it a bit too far. It got to the point where I made up a game, um... Oh, no. So, so, I would walk up to her and be like, <laughs> and, like, be, like, beating my chest, and she'd know, like, oh, he's tormenting me. And, and then I made up a game where it was, uh, Chase, and then the girl's name. And I would scream that, and that was everyone around her cue to run away from her. And that was the game to just not let her be <laughs> So I was like, oh man, like this is fun, yeah! And then to this day, I think she brought it up once when I was hanging out with her in high school. She's like, you're an asshole. And I was like, yeah. And then I like, I, I was like, oh, let's try to play. And then like later on, I'm thinking about it. And even to the like recently, I was thinking about it. And I was like, oh my, that's horrible. Right. That's, that's one of those things that like you think about the rest of your life. You're like, oh man. I was like, that was a horrible thing that I did. Why did I do that? Right. You're not really, you're not thinking about it. You just do it. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. Where can the people find you? Oh, that's great. Okay. Um, <laughs> I am currently posting... Um, I post entirely in Newgrounds. So my Newgrounds handle is uh, at lmarshmallowbra. Uh, so I guess I'll spell that out. It's like it's not spelled marshmallow like normally. It's marsh and then M-E-L-L-O-W, like mellow. And then bra spelled like bra. <laughs> uh, that would be cool if someone followed me. Uh, and then same exact thing on TikTok. I'm on TikTok, too. All right, go follow Marshy on Newgrounds and TikTok. And if you don't, I'll know. Yeah, me too. <laughs> You'll know more than I do. <laughs> but everyone will know, trust me. I'll make we'll, it public. <laughs> we'll all know. We will, we will cross our arms and wag our fingers and be very disappointed in you. You exactly. know who you are. I'll, I'll do, you know, if everyone knows this, I'll do the Karen thing. I'll point directly at you. <laughs> I'll, ask to see your, I'll ask to see your manager, which by this point will be your parents. You don't want me doing that? Come on. Yes. Well, Marshy, it's it been has a pleasure. been an absolute no. pleasure to have you on. Thank you for being the second guest on the MH Forecast. And Do you have like a slogan? Not yet. Okay. Uh, uh, MH4 is really, really good. There that's... I don't it's know starter. if I want that to be my slogan. <laughs> That's a starter, though. You go see it's a starter pack. You, you heard it here first, folks. MH4 is really, really good. Really, really good. There you and, go. And humble too. <laughs> yeah, and humble. And, and he's like he's like and There you go. Uh, benevolent. Other, other fancy words. Exactly. There you go. So, but thank you for having me on. This was a pleasure. And if the fans want me to come back, I'll come back. I'm I'm benevolent. Dude, I want you to come back. It'd be awesome to have you on again. I'd be fine with this. I like podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will link uh, Marshy's stuff in the description. And so you have no excuse not to go check him out. And uh, 
All right. Anything, any last thoughts you want to say before we go? Please do not be angry with me. <laughs> I'm uncultured and I'm a stupid man. If I said anything that offended anyone, I'm not going to apologize, but please don't be angry. I think you're going to be fine. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Well, everyone, thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast and I will see you on the next one. Everyone take care. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the MH Forecast. The MH Forecast is recorded live in our Discord server and you too can be on an episode. A link to join is below. For extended and exclusive episodes, be sure to listen on Newgrounds.com. Special thanks to Robo for use of his song Analog Hero. Bye bye.